My name is Melanie. I'm a part-time worker living with my husband and my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law was a single mother and I met her many times before we got married. When we decided to get married, I had no qualms about moving in together with my mother-in-law. The three of us lived together happily. My mother-in-law never bullied me at all and we shared the household chores. While I worked part-time, my mother-in-law did the household chores. I did the rest when I was at home. We often cooked together. Even in such a happy life, there were a few things that bothered me. One day, I was going out with friends. I tried to put on the necklace my husband had given me, but I couldn't find it. So I asked my mother-in-law, who was taking care of the house while I was working part-time. Mary, have you seen my necklace? It's heart-shaped one. Tom gave it to me. A necklace? I haven't seen it. I will look for it later. She said like that. So I thought that I left it somewhere in the house and figured it would turn up eventually. I didn't say anything more to her since then. The next day, I found my necklace under the trash can. I wondered why it was there, but would I have thrown it away by mistake along with something else? I'm so goofy that even I'm appalled by my own goofiness sometimes. At that time, I thought, I will be careful in the future. I didn't pay much attention to it after that. After that, I continued losing things several times, but I was still convinced that it was my fault. Later, I would realize that this was not just my forgetfulness. A little while later, I began to get addicted to apply for sweepstakes. The products up for grabs were gourmet food, travel vouchers, health products and more. The idea was to fill in the crossword and enter. It is not easy to win, but very occasionally I would win. I was looking forward to having the goods sent to my house. My mother-in-law is starting to wonder about it too. Melanie, what is that you are doing? She asked me. I don't have a good chance to winning, but still, it's interesting, so why don't you try it too? I recommend it to her. No, it's okay, I will pass. Let me know if you win something good. She said like that. I never thought that at that time, my mother-in-law was planning something like that. After a few entries, I won some health products and I gave them to my mother-in-law as a present. She was so happy. I hope you win some more good things like that, she said. And we'd have a nice conversation. I was relieved that she seems to be enjoying the hobby with me. Then one day, to my surprise, a beefsteak stood up. And it was a prime one from an Astor ranking system. I had applied again and again and finally won. I was so happy. I had never had such a high quality meat before. I was really looking forward to the day it arrived. That's right. Let's surprise Tom and my mother-in-law. I waited excitedly for the meat to arrive. But a few days later, the beef stick didn't arrive on the scheduled delivery day. I checked the delivery mail and sure enough it was supposed to be today. I had been home all afternoon. I had designated it for delivery during the day, so it should have arrived by now. I was working part-time in the morning, so I asked my mother-in-law who was home during that time. There should have been a package for me today, but haven't you received it? A package? I didn't receive anything. 
It was marked as a cancelled on the absentee ballot. Is that so? I don't know anything about that. That's what she said. I decided to call the courier to confirm. Then the man who delivered the package said, I handed over to a resident of the house, but you didn't receive it? That's strange. I will check just in case. That's what he said. What the hell is going on? Is my mother in law lying? My husband was at work at the time, and my mother in law would have been the only one in the house. Why did she say she didn't know? I will ask my mother in law again. I just checked with the delivery company. They said they gave it to a resident of the house. Are you sure you don't know? You keep pestering me. I told you I don't know. She said it like she was fed up with me. I couldn't help it. Okay, I will talk to Tom about it. My mother in law suddenly became impatient. Don't bother telling Tom. He's busy with work and you're making him worry unnecessarily. Oh, but now this conversation is over. I didn't know why she was talking that way. I mean, it's too suspicious. You really don't know, do you? You're persistent. If you talk about this again, I will kick you out of the house. I had a hunch. So, as a last resort, I decided to talk to the police. They often have a wanted list which says, like, if you get a hint, call 911. I was impressed this is that hint they were talking about. Besides, I didn't want to be stopped again by my mother in law, so I called the police while my mother in law was away. I explained the situation, and they said there was a good chance that my mother in law had stolen it. I asked them to come to my house. The day after the consultation, the police arrived at our house. My mother in law was not at home. So I asked them to wait for a while. I'm home. There was a police car out in front of our house. I wonder what's going on. It's so scary. As soon as my mother in law finished her sentence, she froze on the scene. Oh, we are sorry to bother you. We're from the all police department. My mother in law's face went pale. Hey, Melanie, did you just call the police? What the hell were you thinking? She started yelling at me out of nowhere. Why are you yelling at me? I was really looking forward to this package that was supposed to come. I've just won the prize. I was going to eat it with everyone. It's embarrassing to make such a big fuss. What if the neighbors start some strange rumors about us? She was very aggressive. But I'd be scared if they were thieves. Then the police officer said, Well, well, we were just asking you a few questions. You don't have to get so worked up. Or is there something wrong with you? It's not like that. But what is it? There's no need to make such a big fuss over a mere piece of meat. My mother in law's words made the place quiet for a moment. Excuse me? What? Get the policeman to leave. How did you know that the meat was in the package? What? The policeman sighed. May I ask what's going on? Then my mother in law gritted her teeth and looked down. She thought she couldn't lie anymore. After a few moments of silence, I received it, my mother in law said. The police asked her why, and my mother in law began to talk in a whispered voice. 
I have hated Melanie for a long time. I hated her for taking my precious Tom. I couldn't hide my surprise. I had never thought that my mother-in-law hated me. I thought that my husband, my mother-in-law and I had always lived in harmony and had always gotten along well together. I had no idea that my mother-in-law thought of me this way. She went on to say, When I found out that the beef steak was on its way, I decided to eat alone with Tom, without Melanie. It was a very expensive meat. I wanted to make Tom happy. She wanted to ostracize me. I was shocked. How could I have not realized how much she hated me? But then I remembered. I had lost a necklace my husband had given me once. And when I later found it under the trash can, I didn't lose it. My mother-in-law threw it away. And all the things I thought I had lost after that, it was all my mother-in-law. And all of them were things that Tom gave me. It all makes sense now. All those times I thought I'd lost something. Was it all you're doing? The things I lost. All these things were present that Tom gave me. Yeah, it's disgusting that Tom gave you all those presents. I was trying to think of a way to get Melanie away from Tom. I finally came up with something good. What? She has been doing that to me from the beginning. I didn't realize it at all. I guess I was the only one who thought we were getting along until now. I mean, I thought the officers might be taken aback. But they both looked at my mother-in-law with serious expression on their faces. Then one of the officers said, May I have a word? I'm just checking. You didn't steal anything else and things that belonged to your daughter-in-law, did you? I didn't do that, I'm sure. Are you sure? It's not good to hide things. Please, bear with me. I didn't take anything else than my daughter-in-law's things. I see. That's all right then. My mother-in-law turned blue because the police officer suspected her of more crimes. The other policeman, he looked at me and grinned. I see. So you punished my mother-in-law a little. So where's the meat now? Oh. I couldn't hear her voice. What? Where is it? I asked back. I ate it. It's gone. You ate it? I think it weighed about 10 pounds. I thought I was just tasting it, but it was so good I couldn't resist. Besides, it was such a delicious meat. I was so angry when I thought you were going to eat it with Tom that I ate it alone. This stunned me and also the police officer were taken aback. I wanted to say I was going to eat it with you and Tom, three of us, but I got too tired to say that. I felt like I'd had enough. I told the officer that I would talk it over with my husband. I understand. You must feel burdened. I'm glad it wasn't a burglar or a thief. Then the police officer left. I need to talk to my husband first. I called him and told him what was going on. I'm sorry for my mother's wrongdoings. I'm really sorry. He apologized and came home early that day. And as soon as he got home, he said, What's going on, mom? What are you doing? He immediately confronted my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law was half crying. No, listen, Tom. No, this is... She tried to make excuses, but my husband won't even listen. 
What excuse are you trying to make? Do you even know what you have done? I mean, you even had the police come to the house. Guess that means you wouldn't have confessed your crime unless Melanie called the police. I calmed my husband down for once. We were now alone in the house, just the three of us, and silence fell. At last, the feeling of anticipation was gone, and only a gloomy feeling remained. I broke the silence. You didn't love me at all, right? I loved you, and I was very happy that you treated me so well. I'm so sorry that this happened. Mom, did you do this because you didn't like Melanie? Why? The three of us have been getting along so well together, haven't we? My mother in law answered with a depressed look on her face. I have raised Tom all by myself. He is my only son, my precious son, and we've lived together all our lives. After you got married, Melanie became his first priority. We could live together again, but I didn't like having Melanie around. I've harassed her a few times now, but she never even noticed. I didn't like it either. How selfish. I was too dumbfounded to say anything. I looked at my husband, who was equally disgusted as me. What are you talking about? That doesn't mean you can throw away or steal Melanie's things. Besides, you should be thankful you escaped arrest. Yes, I told my husband about the necklace earlier. Besides the necklace, that they have been several times when things my husband gave me and other things have gone missing. And also told him that after a while, those items have come out of the trash. I can't live with my mother who did this to Melanie anymore. As soon as my husband said that, my mother in law started crying. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything I've done to Melanie. I apologize to her. So don't be like that, Tom. My husband didn't change his firm expression. I can't forgive you either. I was so shocked to learn what you truly thought and felt. I understand your feeling for Tom, but I don't think it's right to do something like that. Melanie feels like that. And we will leave this house. And mom, you will pay for the meat. My mother in law broke down crying at those words. Sometime later, we found a new house to live in. We moved out. My mother in law said she wanted to live with us until the end, and that she didn't want to be alone. But we didn't change our mind. It was all my mother in law's own fault. Now I'm going to start living alone with my husband again. Melanie, I'm so sorry about what happened. I can't believe my mother would do something like that. I'm sorry I didn't realize. He apologized, and I said, You don't need to apologize, Tom. Thank you for believing in me and protecting me. I thanked him. And a few days later, my mother in law brought a package of beef steak. My husband and I ate it together. It was so delicious that it melted in your mouth. I tried to give it to my mother in law too, but she must have learned her lesson this time. She asked me to eat it alone with Tom. So I could eat as much as I wanted without worrying about it. I don't think I will be able to eat this high quality meat again anytime soon. I had a bad experience, but I was able to forget about it when I was eating it. My husband also enjoyed the meat and said it was delicious. I felt happy to see that.
I'm sure my mother-in-law wanted to be with her beloved son all the time. I wonder if that feeling was too strong for her so that she started to harass me. I don't know what will happen when I will have children and they will get married. I wish I could let go my children and see them off properly. That's what I thought quietly in my heart. Then my mother-in-law started to live alone. I don't know what happened to her, but she seems to have a job and to be doing well. I wonder if it was too much for her to face the pressure from the policeman and my husband. Once a year, she sends us 10 pounds of beef steak and a letter of apology. It seems that she works hard and saves up the money to buy it. She seems to be very sorry for what she did, and since she is getting older now, my husband and I have talked about it, and we are thinking of going to see and check on her someday soon.